and this month we are featuring books for Black History Month. I know that it's like the tail end of Black History Month, but you can always find opportunities to share these stories. And um, I tried to, as I was going through this, really limit myself or filter as I was just telling these guys here behind the cameras. I should tell you full disclosure that I was an African American studies major undergraduate and I was also an English major. So I just, there's so many books that come to mind when I'm um, doing this topic. And some of them I've introduced to you before. So, it, you know, I always try to get a little bit of everything in. Um, this month has also been a very busy month while we're coming to our 20 late. And I wanted to start off with a personal story from this weekend. My um, family all got together because my grandmother, who was actually from Germany, recently passed away. But one of the most fun and amazing things about this weekend with everybody together is that when we went to the National Cemetery out in Long Island to inter her remains, we had the opportunity to visit my grandfather's grave and he is a black soldier from, well, he was in World War II and Korea. And then what was a surprise to me, I didn't know was coming, was that my great great grandfather's grave was also in the same cemetery and he fought in World War I. So that was, you know, Black History Month, family together. It was just a really cool experience. And what I've tried to do here to filter myself is stick to books that are you know history or historical fiction so that it's kind of but we can go in all kind of directions and I hope that in the question area you guys ask me questions that allow me to kind of you know fly past the filters that I've given myself so all these. I've been trying to start with um, some books that you know were favorites of mine when I was younger so the one that I pulled to start off with this time is The People Could Fly Right, and this is the American Black Folk Tales told by Virginia Hamilton and illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon, who are a legendary illustrator um, couple. And this is, um, you know, stories, if you look on the cover, this particular story that's illustrated is one where slaves kind of fly back to Africa. And my teacher, Ms. Lichtenstein, who I've mentioned a few times, she would read these stories to us in school. And so this is one that's a favorite of mine. And then I pulled along with that the companion Right, so that's kind of, you know, um, fiction or folk tales. And then this one, Many Thousand Gone, African Americans from Slavery to Freedom. And this is a companion book that goes along with this one. So I thought I would start with that. So, and that is, you know, that is, that's something you could read aloud, you know, any age. Um, but the actual age level reading for the books is probably late elementary school to middle school. So starting off with our youngest age group, I've got some books here. We have a series called Rookie Readers, and the Rookie Readers series is for people just beginning to read. And there are a lot of different kind of sub-series within Rookie Readers. And I, the one that I pulled is biographies, but we have Rookie Reader Geography and um, Holidays, all those different kind of things. And they're this nice size, you know, um, paper overboards books. And these that I pulled here um, in particular are one about Ruby Bridges who is a you know, young woman now. She um, has written several books. This one is not written by her, but this one is about her, um, about her experience being a, a young child integrating a school. And then Mae Jemison, who you know was an African-American astronaut, if you haven't heard of her, then this would be a great, you know, to introduce Mae Jemison. There are also a lot of books about her out there in the world. Bessie Coleman, and I have another book I'll show you in a few seconds about Bessie Coleman, a pilot, she was a pilot. And then our uh, former president, Barack Obama, and sports figure, Serena Williams. Right? So there are several in this series that represent people from all different groups, so I just brought a handful of those to show to you guys. And then, you know, still in the early reader phase, you know, so people who are in pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade. I've got some books that are a mixture of ones that you could read aloud or that you could have them start to read themselves. So I'm starting off with this one, Ada Twist, Scientist, or I'm continuing with this one. It's by Andrea Beattie, illustrated by David Roberts. And um, if you're familiar with the Rosie Revere Engineer book, um, 
and this one also is they've been on the bestseller list for a while so if you've been paying attention to the New York Times bestsellers you may have seen these before and this is just a very curious girl who is doing all kinds she asks her first word is why and she does all kind of experiments trying to figure things out and she gets abolished to a thinking chair at one point by her parents but when they come back she's written all of these formulas and things all over the wall, the wall. so you know, especially uh, thinking about the movie Hidden Figures. I know that I'd recommended that book to you before. This would be a cool book to bring out in conversation with that. It's Ada Twist, Scientist. All right, then maybe I'll stick with the science thing, pulling these out of order. This one is called Ron's Big Mission by Rose Blue and Corrine J. Naden. Yeah, Corrine J. Naden, illustrated by Don Tate. And this is the story of, I believe his last name is Nelson. No, McNair, sorry, Ron McNair. And he is a astronaut. In this particular story, it's a story that's been retold a couple of different times, but it's one where he goes to the public library and at that period of time, he was, um, black kids were not allowed to check books out from this particular library, but they could read the books in the library. He was an avid reader and he, demanded one day in the picture in the the picture book here he actually stands on the library desk and demands that he be allowed to take the books home and checked out and the librarian um gives him a library card he's the first black child to get a card from this library so i love it because it's a library story but also it's uh just a very cool um story of somebody who grew up to be an astronaut I'm gonna take a look real quick and see if we have any questions. Okay. Best early readers for a boy. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Best early readers for a boy. The one that comes to mind first is uh, Don't Throw It to Mo, which I think is a penguin early reader. Um, it's about a young man who's on the football team and he constantly is uh, missing um, when they throw the football to him and then there's a moment at the end where the team kind of creates a strategy that they're gonna throw the ball to him and so the big um, build up is you know is Mo going to catch it or not and then there was another book uh, I can't remember the new title also with Mo that just came out this year and uh, those are the that's the first early reader that comes to my mind um, if I could think of more I'll put them down in the question area so thank you for that question so let's see. All right, so then we're getting to still in early elementary. Now I've got a few, I think that these are mostly biographies and then I've got one that's not quite a biography. So this one is Josephine, words by Patricia Ruby Powell and pictures by Christian Robinson. You may recognize Christian Robinson's name because he is the illustrator for Last Stop on Market Street, which won a lot of awards. This one also got several awards um, two years ago. And I love that it's about Josephine Baker, but I saw when he delivered the speech for getting this book and he and the author actually, instead of delivering a speech, they put some music on and they came down off the stage and danced in the, at the Coretta Scott King Awards. And so that just kind of seared this book in my memory as well as it just being a, you know, gorgeous and beautiful, um, you know, work by the person who was going to do last street, you know, last up on Market Street the next year. So Josephine. And then this one, Bad News for Outlaws. And this is written by Vonda Michelle Nelson and illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. Now, Vonda Nelson is actually um, one of my library mentors. I worked with her early on in my library career and she taught me a lot about being a librarian. And this book is about Bass Reeves, who is uh, one of the US Marshals back in the day on the frontier. I believe he was in the Oklahoma Territory. And what I love about this one, librarian that I am, is that, you know, in the back, there are all the different resources, more reading, the bibliography, and the illustrations by R. Gregory Christie are amazing, you know. And it's just, a, you know, a fabulous book about a figure that many people may have, you know, kind of forgotten about or not think about too much, so. I do think that the uh, Lone Ranger is supposed to be kind of uh, based on, you know, the, um, the Legend of Bass Reeves. Uh, the Legend of Bass Reeves is actually another book that exists out there. And then, 
This is one of our books talking about Bessie. The Story of Aviator Elizabeth Coleman by Nikki Grimes, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And Nikki Grimes actually just won, I believe it's the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award for a lifetime contribution to children's literature. And it's illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And this is about Bessie Coleman, uh, the first African-American female pilot. So you've got, you know, two here about Bessie Coleman. This one for younger readers and Field Blazing Pilot. And then this one, the next age level up. this one I know that I think I probably talked about this book a couple of times this is the case for loving the fight for interracial marriage so I you know had to bring this out considering my uh, you know sorry I told you a little earlier about my grandparents they were interracial marriage it's by Selena Alco and illustrated by Sean Qualls and Selena Alco and it tells the story of a couple that their experience is what the court case loving versus Virginia is based, you know, is based on and went all the way to the Supreme Court and made um, interracial marriage a legal thing in the United States. So, I like this book has personal significance for me, and also it's just, you know, again wonderfully illustrated and uh, a great way to introduce this story to younger readers. So let's take a break for a second and see the questions. I'm paying attention. I just had to look down real quick. From Soka Zuko, what book would you recommend for an eight-year-old boy who reads on a ninth grade level? Recently purchased a Steph Curry book. Excellent. And I would like to know what book that is, a Steph Curry book. Eight-year-old boy who reads on a ninth grade level. I mean, I think that it depends on what he's interested in. Um, certainly that'll you know help me to figure out what would be good to recommend. Um, if he reads on a ninth grade level a lot, um, I, I talk about graphic novels frequently, but a lot of graphic novels and comic books are written at an eighth grade level. So if you go to some of the classic ones where, you know, origin stories where people like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, all that kind of stuff, then you're going to find some stuff that's high interest and um, at that reading level that he'd be ready for. Um, ones that are also, I think, nonfiction wise, you know, some of the ones that I have here like this one, Bad News for Outlaws. This looks like a picture book, but the reading level on it is actually, you know, a little higher than, you know, the kind of words per page than you would expect for a typical, typical picture book. Um, other stories that, for somebody on a ninth grade level, did I bring, oh. This one I'm going to get to a little bit later. It's the Madman of Piney Woods, and the book before it, um, or the book that's a prequel to it, is called Elijah of Buxton by Christopher Pro Curtis. I'll explain a little bit more about it when I get to um, to that one. Those are kind of aimed at middle grade, and um, but the reading level on the, these books, I think that it's like a thousand or so for the Lexile, um, and so you know for it, the interest level is kind of that, you know, middle grade um, level, which probably would appeal to because he's eight years old and he's probably in third grade, I'm guessing. Um, and then the, but the reading level is, you know, kind of a, a, almost at the top, you know, of um, the kind of reading level for middle grade stories and stuff like that. So if I think of any more, I will add them down in the uh, comment section. All right, so moving from, as we transition right from well, maybe like we'll do this one first. This uh, book here, this is also nonfiction. And this was a story that when I first, this book came across my desk, I hadn't heard of before. This is Fort Mose and the story of the man who built the first free black settlement in colonial America. And so a lot of times, you know, there are these firsts that, or not first, but there are stories that we get to hear a lot about different um, historical figures when it gets to Black History Month. But it's always fun to introduce a new story uh, or a new name that folks may not have heard before. And this particular story is about Francisco Menendez. And I say there's like a picture there. You can see if what he used to look like. And there was one, where's the picture that I wanted to show you? Oh, wait. Oh, 
I should have post more, um, posted it the page, but this book right here. So then I wanted to transition into the books that I have recommended for upper elementary with a wordless book. And this book, Unspoken, um, is one that I love because it has a quilt in it. I'm a quilter. And also because one of the things that I researched when I was in library school was the myth of the um, quilts being used on the Underground Railroad as uh, signposts. And that is something that is highly disputed. So if you are a black quilter, then you really want to believe that this is true. And there are historians that have proved that um, or try to disprove or, you know, so there's no evidence to prove that this is true. And then the counter to that argument would be, but there's, you know, there's no proof because people didn't say anything because it was a secret, you know? So it kind of goes back and forth. And I decided when I was in library school, I was going to research this in depth. And so one of the things I love about this book is that there is a quilt that shows up. Um, you know, this is a beautifully, beautifully done book. Sorry, I should give you the name of the author, Henry Cole. Right, so the book is very beautifully done and it's a story of a runaway slave but you never actually see the runaway slave you just you know you've got this small girl she's just going around right she's looking you see this cornfield here for a second and then all of a sudden my fingers right there she can see this eye in the cornfield right and she runs back inside and you know she's you know, tell someone and then over the series the next few pages you start to see you know things that are taken out somewhere to this person and um, one of the things early on in the book I should have if I flip back you see that at this farm they have a quilt hanging on the fence right? and this is the sawtooth star pattern and it's you know it's it's right you know it's completely correct for the era and the time and place that this would take place and you know unspoken being the title it's like you don't know was that a quilt hanging on the fence actually a signal or was it just that they had it hanging out there to dry so um i think that this is a great book to introduce that uh, myth and uh you know that kind of factual debate that exists there are a lot of lesson plans out there about this and this would be a great book at any age level that you could use to talk about it so that is my transition there all right let's see if we have we're going to try to pepper the questions in between. So I've got it from Jojo Harvey. I also have a 20 month old boy, not sure if you covered that age. Okay, so 12 month, 20 months old, divide by 12. <laughs> and that's somebody who's almost two years old, they're a little bit past 18 months. Um, and you wanna know what book for a boy? think off the top of my head a book for a boy who's about a year and a half my friend's son who's about that age what is the book that he demands that she read to him all the time I'm gonna think about that and it's gonna come to me as I go through my uh, friend when we were talking on the phone in fact her son will come up and demand that he read something so um, going through okay so we are up to later elementary school um, not quite middle school yet and I have this book called Zane and the Hurricane, A Story of Katrina. It's written by Rodman Philbrick. And the reason I pulled this one is because it's recent history. You know, the, um, Black History Month doesn't have to only be things that happened in the 1800s and around the Civil Rights era, but there are, you know, opportunity, particularly if you're in this region, and not just this region, the people that were living in this area and were flooded um, during Hurricane Katrina have moved all over the United States. So it's a you know possibility you could find somebody in your community who could uh, tell this experience. And this is fiction, but it's a story of a young boy who, uh, you know, he's they're trying to escape the city and then he his dog jumps out the window and like runs back down the highway ramp and off and he goes and chases the dog and then ends up stuck in the flood. And then um, you see these characters here, you see there's him his dog, um, this man and this young girl that end up they in a, you know, in a boat and they're just kind of traveling around in the waters and they witness a lot of different things that are floating around in the water. And um, you know, some of the things are not, it's not too, um, I don't know, harsh that, uh, you know, a middle grade or elementary reader couldn't read it or, you know, shouldn't read it or anything like that. It's enough that you could explain to them. It gives you opportunity to introduce and explain, you know, what are those bloated things that are floating in the water um, 
that they're seeing as they're going, you know, by in the book and stuff like that. Right. So then I've got Touch the Sky, My Solo Flight Around the World, Barrington Irving and Holly Pepe. Right. And this is a story of a young man who decided he was going to be the uh, first, um, you know, first solo flight, young, youngest and um, first African-American to fly all the way around the world. So combining all of those first together. And actually, we have some materials um, that go along with this Touch the Sky. And I do believe that Barrington Irving travels around with um, some scholastic groups and does um, kind of presentations and stuff like that in some schools and stuff like that. So this one, Touch the Sky, Barrington Irving. And I'm still trying to think in my head of what that, that book is that my friend's child is always looking for. It's going to come to me. Maybe she'll be watching Facebook Live and she'll tell me what it is. All right, so for a five-year-old girl who loves animals starting to read, I'm so glad that you answered me this question. So it gives me the opportunity to pull this one. Remember, I had to filter myself a little bit. <laughs> Animal Arc, celebrating our wild world in poetry and pictures, photographs by Joel Sartori, Sartori and words by Kwame Alexander, Winnip Newberry Medal. And that um, medal he got was for another book of his, which I also have here, the crossover. Um, and this is, you know, it's by National, National Geographic and it's got, um, you know, for a five-year-old, this would kind of be like right in that sweet spot, I think, of what you're looking for, for a young girl who loves animals. And it's by um, an African-American author, Kwame Alexander. Uh, that. Now I can put it up here. Oh, yay. We're going to talk about that book. All right, so now I've got <laughs> right, so I was talking about historical fiction and how it didn't have to be that far back. All right, so this one, I've talked about these books before. I love them. This is the Stats series by Amari Stoudemire, who um, is a basketball player. And this first one, Home Court, um, is you know where he's first kind of discovering how good he is at basketball. And then this one, I think, is number three, Slam Dunk where the young man is trying to, you know, slam dunk for the first time. You know, I've, as I've mentioned before, my dad was a basketball coach, and I think that these really describe the journey that people who really are dying to play basketball and, you know, high school, college, go professional, play overseas, all those, you know, dreams that um, young men have often. It just really describes the journey really well. And, you know, Mari Stoudemire is, it's a, you know, it's loosely autobiographical about, you know, his experience of you know going through that journey from discovering he was good at basketball to being the player that he was you know able to become. And then before I get to middle school, one of the last ones I have, and this would be good for a middle school reader too, but this is Ten True Tales: Young Civil Rights Heroes. All right, the author here is Alan Zulo, and the reason that I pulled this one is again trying to think of stories about people that we may not have heard of you know, very frequently when we think of the civil rights movement. So some of the names in here are Chuck Bonner and Frank Bates. And I should give you the full chapter title, Chuck Bonner and Bloody Sunday, Frank Bates and the Crawfordville Protests, Carol Barner and the Stolen Girls of Americas, LaVon Brown and the Greenwood Struggle, Janice Wisely and the Children's Crusade, Andy Heidelberg and the Norfolk 17, Henry Steele and the Jail No Bail Protesters, Charlie Person and the Freedom Riders. Wait, I think that was, yeah, I thought it was Pearson Person. Rodney Hurst and Axe Handle Saturday, and then Thresh Thresser, Caswell and the Clinton 12. I think that's yeah and then there's the introduction so if you think about some of those things that I named there's some that I'm familiar with but um, remember I you know was an African-American studies major but then there are also some that I had never you know names and situations that I wasn't aware of so this is a great um, book we have many others in this series Ten True Trails um, there's a story about Vietnam book with Vietnam stories and stuff like that um, that kind of give you a perspective on what some of the younger folks were doing in during the rights, rights movement and that is all right, so now I'm moving into middle grade. And so I'm thinking about sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And one of the first books that I pulled is, I'm sure I'm in the right 
age range, is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, William Kam Kwamba and Brian Miller. And this is the story of a you know, young man in Malawi and he decided to build a windmill in his community. It's a young reader's edition of a book that um, came out for adults and it's based, you know, it's a true story. So a good one there. I haven't read it yet, but I, it was one of the ones that came to my mind. I was thinking about what I would talk about today. And then The Mad Man of Piney Woods by Christopher Paul Curtis and Elijah of Buxton is another book that Christopher Paul Curtis wrote. What I love about these, um, and I think I may have discussed these before, is just that when we think about the Underground Railroad, a lot of times the story ends when they get to Canada. But um, Christopher Paul Curtis, who is from Canada, in Elijah Buxton, gives us the story of the first black community that was set up by escaped slaves in, its, in Bux, Buxton is the name of that town. And then this book, which is a companion to it, takes us back to that town, but about 40 years after. So some of the characters from the first book are in there. And then in this book, one of the things that's interesting, it's uh, two protagonists, and we get to hear the story from this young Irish uh, main character of his grandmother's experience with the coffin ships, which were Irish coming to Canada, and they were kind of limited to staying on their ships for a long time because of disease and stuff like that. It was a horrific experience for many of them. So it introduces you to you know two, two things that I hadn't known or thought about, or maybe thought about too much um, that were going on in Canada. Um, related to black history. And there's a third book that Christopher Paul Curtis is doing. And I've got Unbound, a novel in verse by Anne Berg, and Anne Eberg, um, author of All the Broken Pieces and Seraphina's Promise. Um, Seraphina's Promise is an excellent book about the earthquake in Haiti. And then this one we actually read for our employee book club, like mm, last month. Yeah, this past month we read Restart, and then this was the month before. And much like this one, right, with some things that they have in similar, you know, in, that are similar, is that you get introduced to the story of a maroon community down in the south. And um, there were also maroon communities and places in the Caribbean. And you think about Jamaica, there are some folks that were living in the mountains. And here there were people who were living in some very just kind of harsh conditions and swamps and, um, you know, places with alligators and stuff like that. And so in this story, they run away, but instead of heading north, and getting to Canada, which is you know these kind of Christopher Paul Curtis stories tell us. Um, Anne Berg, this is the stories of, of um, folks that were in the Dismal Swamp, which is a you know a real place. And uh, she did a lot of research, went there, and uh, read the WPA um, slave uh, narratives in order to get perspective on on that story and tell well. And then it's a novel written in verse, and so. It's uh, one of those things where it's very easy to read, but the concepts are, you know, high level and gives you opportunity to jump off into a lot of different things. All right, so then I've got now, I mean, this is still middle school. But this one, Hand in Hand, 10 Black Men Who Changed America. This is by Andrea Davis Pinckney and Brian Pinckney, and Andrea is one of the editors here at Scholastic. And the... Um, illustrations in this as well as you know those the stories are just fabulous so I just wanted to show you some of the portraits that we have here that Brian Pinkney did and so for each story you get this kind of amazing portrait of the person and then you get this um, you know like a story that again you know introduces you to that so to that person so for the person who is asking about their you know eight-year-old that reads at the ninth grade level this might be something, this is Jackie Robinson, this might be something that would be interesting because, you know, the, it doesn't require the sustained length, you know, uh, uh, reading all the way through. You can just read a, a particular story and then maybe that story would, you know, uh, capture his interest and then, you know, could go on and find other books about that person. And that book won a Corinne Scott King medal, I believe. And then also by Andrea Davis Pinckney, I haven't had a chance to read this one, um, but this is Rhythm Ride, A Road Trip Through the Motown Sound. And so this gives you a little history about Barry Gordy and everything that was going on in Motortown, AKA Detroit. And for her book launch party, they had a, um, a group that was singing a lot of the classic songs that are um, um, kind of referenced and described in this book. And I love that to me, this looks like a record, the way that, you know, the square of it. And now, so now I have some stuff that's kind of, um, well, I, this one's probably a transition book, and then I can 
we get to high school. I have Lizzie Bright and the Buckminster Boy. This is by Gary Schmidt. And again, this is one that I like. It's historical fiction, but it's about an actual community that used to exist. They lived on an island, and um, at one point they were all removed from the island. Um, so look in here. I read this book a very long time ago. Let's see, Phippsburg, Maine. And um, the main character, you know, um, he is this young man here, but then he has the opportunity to learn from Lizzie Bright, and she's an excellent baseball player, so you've got a girl in sports there. And then once you read this book about this community that was basically forcibly removed from this island where they were all living, then uh, you give you opportunity to go and do some research about that community. And we have a couple of you know books here that were like that. So before I get to the high school ones, and I'll check too to see if there are any questions, you know, taking a look at opportunities to go back, you know, there's this one which gives you opportunity to look up the community from Maine, and then Unbound, which gives you the opportunity to look into maroon communities, and then the Buxton series by Christopher Paul Curtis, who gives you the opportunity to investigate what um, escaped slaves were doing in Canada. And, what did I have? Oh, Bad News for Outlaws. You know, it gives you the opportunity to investigate one of the famous US Marshals. I think the other one, oh, Fort Moses gives the opportunity to investigate the first black um, settlement in colonial America. Like that. Yeah, sometimes, you know, whether even with high school, you can take some of these picture books and then uh, take a look and, you know, give basically, you know, use the picture book with middle school or high school as an opportunity to introduce something new. So I'm going to go very quickly with these last few because. As you can tell, I can go on forever about this topic, right? So for high school, I picked, no, this morning I was standing at my bookshelf, staring at all my books. Like I could just take one whole shelf, you know, off of my bookcase and bring it in and talk about them all for you. But it, like I got to, you know, filter myself. So I was like, what can I bring that's fun? People might have forgot about, really capture somebody's interest, historical fiction. So I pulled this one off the shelf, Supervan versus Muhammad Ali by Neil Adams, Denny O'Neill. You can see there, I actually managed to get this one autographed when I was at a comic book convention. And it's got Superman and Muhammad Ali engaged in a boxing match. And, you know, I don't want to give anything, I'm not going to tell you who won. Everybody who I've shown this book to so far today asked me who won. But um, they actually work together in this book. This is not, you know, just Superman versus Muhammad Ali, although you do get this story in the book. Um, you can see if you look closely, you know, Batman is on looking here. Right. So also comic books, I have March book one, book two, I don't have book three because that book just won a whole lot of awards and they're checked out. Actually, these are my copies because the library copies are all gone. This is by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. And just the third book just won the Prince Award and several other awards. And it's a story of John Lewis um, during the Civil Rights Movement. So it's a kind of a memoir autobiography because it's a, about a particular moment. And there are three books in this series. And I've got a nonfiction title, The Freedom Summer Murders, you know, about the freedom writers that were um, murdered when they were down south trying to register more black folks to vote. And then all the way at the end, I've got some recommendations for parents, teachers, librarians, and, you know, teenagers that are avid readers. This one has gotten a lot of attention in the past year or so, Tiny Easy Coats, Between the World and Me. And the reason it's a good transition book, it won the Alex Award, which is uh, adult books that they think teens would like, but also it's a, it's a father writing to his son. And so it's meant to be kind of for a teenager. But as a parent, you know, some of the things that Tanya is talking about would resonate. Um, and many adults are reading it all over the place. And then I've got Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria by Beverly Daniel Tatum. I read this book in college, but we actually brought this back this past summer of 2016. We read this at Scholastic in our employee book club, kind of taking a dip into adult reads. Um, and it just kind of discovered, um, discusses what's going on in schools, uh, you know, high school and college, and, uh, you know, kind of 
interactions between different races and opportunities that there are in education and that are missing. And then the final one I have, I had to print out because the book is gone. But if I, I think I mentioned Hidden Figures before, um, and the, this one is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. This was popular several years ago, but if you read Hidden Figures and loved it and you're looking for other stories that are like that, then you'll enjoy this one. Henrietta Lacks is uh, a person who, when she was uh, seeing the doctors, and you know, decades and decades and decades ago, they took some of her cells. She had a particular kind of form of cancer where the cells were multiplying like crazy, and her cells are the cells, uh, that I think they're called HeLa, H-E-L-A, that you can see that they actually bolded the letters there on the cover, are cells that are used for most of the, you know, kind of laboratory testing and stuff like that that is done today. There are literally billions and trillions of her cells all over the place that are frequently used and her family didn't know about it, didn't benefit from it. Um, the author, she was in medical school, I believe. The author, sorry, is Rebecca Skloot. She was in medical school and heard this story and ended up later on, not right away, but later on investigating it, meeting the family, and just kind of putting Henrietta Lacks and her you know, story back on the map. And that is it for the stories that I managed to filter myself down to, to share with you this month on the you know second to last day <laughs> black history month i hope that you've enjoyed it we're going to post the full list on the scholastic parents page and uh, if there are any questions that i didn't get to then i will um, try to go through those and answer them for you and um, that last part you know question that i had about the um, book for a one and a half or a 20 month old young man i will make that my first priority to put up there for you so thank you everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next month.